everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about what helps keep me creatively sane and what inspired me to start a YouTube channel. And I also wanted to add that if you want to see more art and creativity tips from me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. So let's get started. So early on, I really struggled with being able to keep to one thing. And this was the case even before I knew that I more so thrived in the creative field. If you guys have been on this channel before, you might already know some of these things, so I'm just gonna like try to breeze through them as quickly as possible. But basically, I worked the nine to five for several years and I really couldn't find happiness in that. So I decided to move to a lateral position in the same company that put me away from the public into the back office with more of a seven to three schedule, which I had hoped would help me, you know, get some of my days back. But what that instead turned into was a job with an indefinite amount of overtime every single day and it was even like looked down upon if you left at 3 p.m. So that job ended up leaving me miserable and it made me realize that something had to change dramatically. So I quit that job and went back to school in a creative field. Now when I was in school I also found myself having a hard time focusing only on one thing. So I really liked the digital art aspect of my major, and in a lot of ways I liked the illustrative part of my major. Both of these elements were a little bit similar, but not quite, and I just like, whenever I would get asked like, what do you want to do when you graduate, I'd be like, eh. <laughs> I like so many things, like how do, we, how do you pick just one? So uh, I graduated and I still felt that way where I, I couldn't just focus on one thing. I was just so fascinated by so many things and I felt like lost and like I was just kind of like floating around unsure of what to latch onto if anything and I don't know if you guys are feeling similarly but I feel like this might be an experience that a lot of creatives tend to feel. So I have been listening to this podcast by Andy J. Pizza called Creative Pep Talk and if you haven't heard of it you should totally check it out. It is an amazing podcast. If you're ever looking for like creative motivation this is a really great place to go and he just has like a really cool way of speaking with metaphors that takes abstract things and really makes them like understandable. <laughs> but yeah, I listened to one episode that really talked about like how to always love what you're doing and it really helped me figure myself out, <laughs> basically. Some other questions that he asks in his podcast are what speaks to you and what themes are important for you to pursue as a creative. Once you start to answer those questions, if you put those themes at the forefront of your decisions for what you maybe want to study or learn or even what jobs you might want to take, then even if all of your work is vastly different, you're still going to be you know, following your own goals and themes, and it won't matter that these jobs can vary so much. So those questions, you know, what speaks to me? My answer to that was storytelling and accessibility. I have a love for telling stories and learning about other people's stories, but I also love the idea of increasing accessibility in anything really but uh, I like to focus on the arts and once I was able to like really focus on those themes I found myself doing projects that were totally different from each other and that I maybe hadn't even fully done before so it was like a new learning experience for me but because these projects 
were linked somehow to one or both of these themes, it never felt like I had to stray from anything, you know? And it, it felt like I was at peace with myself and with my creativity. So I really feel like answering those questions has helped me level up in my creative career. <laughs> so all of this to say that these themes help tie into some of the main reasons for why I also started a YouTube channel. I love to use this free resource to share my artistic knowledge and therefore hopefully help increase accessibility in the arts, at least a little bit. But another reason that I also wanted to start this channel was because I loved the artistic community on YouTube and on social media, and I really wanted to find a way to connect more with it. Now, I also wanted to take this as a chance to let you guys know that I want to include more storytelling themes in coming videos. I really feel like I have been able to do a lot of videos on, you know, art tips and accessibility, uh, you know, as much as I can. And I also, I don't want to stop doing that, but I also wanted to find a way to incorporate storytelling so that I could reach both of my favorite themes. <laughs> I also wanted to take this as a chance to ask you guys, do you have any ideas you'd like to see in any of my videos? Does any of this resonate with you? Are there any questions that you have that maybe I can help answer? You know, I would love to hear from you. I love it when you guys reach out to me and there's a way that I can help you further. But yeah, that is everything I have for today. <laughs> I hope that I was able to inspire you and that I can maybe get you thinking differently about your creativity. This was a pretty chill video, <laughs> so I hope that this really helped to speak to you in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions or thoughts, and if you had fun with me today, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next Saturday for the next one. Bye!